Hey guys, welcome to the video on top five tips on how to study pharmacology brought to you by Memory Farm. Today, I'm going to be going over some of the most common mistakes that students make when studying pharmacology and then give you five tips on how to study more effectively and ace your exams. These tips are going to save you hours of wasted time and allow you to study smarter. But first, what is pharmacology? Pharmacology is the study of drugs and their action on the body, including side effects and mechanisms of action. It is a necessary course for many students in the medical field, including pharmacists, nurses, and physicians, but it is also known to be one of the most difficult subjects. With a ton of drug information to learn and memorize in such a short amount of time, it can be scary and very overwhelming. So without further ado, let's get into it. The top mistakes that students make when studying pharmacology. Number one, no study plan or method. Students often go in feeling overwhelmed about where to start studying or even how they should study. They often read through the book, cover to cover or skim through lecture notes that are five chapters long. The issue with skimming through the material is that it is mostly passive learning versus active learning, which helps our brains store the information in our long-term memory. Number two, students are often unsure about which part of the material is important and which is not. So instead, they try to memorize the chapters or the PowerPoint word for word. And though that seems like a surefire way to ace your exam, it can be information overload for your brain to remember it all. Additionally, it requires hours and hours of time invested. Number three, studying each drug individually. The other mistake that students will often make is to study each drug individually, including its mechanism of action, all the side effects, contraindications, precautions, brand name, and indications. This can be very confusing once you are studying drug number 50 and you start to ask yourself which drug causes that obscure side effect. Instead, group them together into classes which often have similar characteristics. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Number four, memorization without true comprehension. As a future clinician who will be recommending, prescribing, or educating these medications to your patients, it is important that you truly understand how they work to the point where you can explain it to a child. If you are simply regurgitating information without true comprehension, it is harder to remember the key points about the medication. And last but not least, number five, cramming the night before the exam. Learning pharmacology requires you to put in the hard work and cramming a large amount of information the night before the exam is not only stressful, but also does not allow your brain enough time to store it into your long-term memory, leading to cases of test and dump. Later on, you will have to relearn the information for other classes or clinicals. So knowing some of the common mistakes students make, let's get into some easy tips on how to improve your study methods. Tip number one, find the common suffixes or prefixes of different drug classes. A great study method is to learn drug prefixes and suffixes that are common to drug classes. Drugs in the same class will often work on the same disease state, share the same mechanism of action, side effects, precautions, and counseling points. For example, cardiac drug class beta blockers all end in the same suffix, LOL, such as metoprolol, carvedilol, and bisoprolol. The drugs in this class work by blocking beta-1 receptors in the heart and slowing down the heart rate. This could lead to symptoms that are directly related to a slow heart rate, such as lower blood pressure, tiredness, dizziness, etc. Grouping drugs into drug classes by their suffixes or prefixes is a powerful tool that can cut down the number of drugs you need to study and memorize substantially. Tip number two, start with the mechanism of action. If you know this one fact about the drug class, it can help you remember the indication and some of the side effects. For example, lisinopril works by inhibiting an enzyme that converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, a hormone that causes vasoconstriction of blood vessels leading to hypertension. Less of this active hormone in the system leads to a decrease in blood pressure. From this, you'll know that lisinopril is used to treat hypertension or high blood pressure, and some common side effects include hypotension or low blood pressure, dizziness, and headache. Number three, use flashcards or make a study guide. 
Making your own flashcards or study guides is a form of active learning where your brain is able to process the information and consolidate it down to a form that you can use to quiz yourself or review with later. If you don't have time to write out flashcards of your own, you can use online flashcard programs like Inko to type or copy the information over, or you can also buy them. Memory Farm has study guides that are available for you to purchase as well if you are interested. This is the part where you just can't cram the night before, but instead have to put in the effort and work to learn the information through making these flashcards. Number four, use mnemonics, acronyms, or visuals. Mnemonics are popular tools used to aid in committing important pharmacology facts to memory. It can make learning fun and forces you to slow down and focus on the information more. The longer you allow yourself to review and think about the information, the more likely it will be stored in your long-term memory. Below are five different pharmacology mnemonics that you can use to help you during your studies. The first type of mnemonics is an acronym. Acronym-based mnemonics use the first letters of the target words to assist in remembering large amounts of information. For example, to remember the side effects of statins, think of the acronym HMG-CoLA. H stands for hepatotoxicity, M for myalgia, G for GI side effects such as nausea and flatulence, and C for CPK increase, as well as A for avoiding pregnancy. HMG Cola also reminds you of the enzyme that statins target for their lipid lowering effects. Next is drug names. Drug companies often name drugs with stem words that hint at their class or mode of action. For example, rivaroxaban, apixaban, and adoxaban are direct factor 10A inhibitors as denoted by the stem XA in their names. Macrobid is dosed twice a day or BID versus macrodantin is dosed four times a day. Pay attention to the drug names when you're studying to see if you can spot some of these stems. Next, you can use keyword mnemonics. Use sound alikes to help you associate the word to a new key term. For example, of the second generation antipsychotics, risperidone and paliperidone have the highest risk for extrapyrimidal symptoms and tardive dyskinesia. The mnemonic you can use for this is movement disorders are no fun, so don't risk it, pal. So picking out keywords in each drug, risk sounds like risperidone and pal sounds like paliperidone. Next, you can use the grouping method. For example, all antibiotics usually need to be renally adjusted. The list can be endless. It is usually easier to remember the outliers or those that do not need to be renally adjusted. Next is comprehension. Like I said before, understanding is always best for long-term retention. For example, the respiratory fluoroquinolones are gemifloxacin, moxifloxacin, and levofloxacin. Think about the mnemonic, go my lungs, to help you remember this. There is a common misconception that ciprofloxacin has poor lung penetration because it isn't considered a respiratory fluoroquinolone, when the actual reason is that it lacks activity against streptococcus pneumoniae, a common bacteria that causes pneumonia. And last, our final tip is to group the information. You only have a limited time to study, therefore you want to get the most bang for your buck. The grouping technique, also known as the chunking method, is an effective way to organize information to enhance the amount of information you can retain to memory. Our brains naturally file things into categories. During exams and in clinical practice, we get asked questions that require us to retrieve information that is grouped. For example, which antibiotic can I give in a patient with renal insufficiency? Which anti-nausea medication should I prescribe? So studying information in this format is ideal. That's all for now. I hope these tips and tricks can help you study more effectively. And as always, if you found this helpful, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to let others know so they can benefit from this video as well.